Today is the big day where crypto regulations in Hong Kong has just taken effect. Now is the time for action where hundreds of crypto exchanges around the world are about to embark on a race for the limited VASP licenses to operate here in Hong Kong. So in this video, we're gonna fill you in with the latest news update that is happening right now in the Hong Kong crypto scene. Let's dive right in. So this is June 1st. And the first thing you have to know is that the SFC just published their arrangements for the new licensing regime for the crypto exchanges here in Hong Kong. So the most important thing to note is that the trading platforms, the crypto exchanges that are operating here in Hong Kong before today can continue to provide their VA service from today to May 31st. So that is one year of continuing to be able to do spot trading, earn from staking, even futures. And that applies to Binance, Bybit, OKX, Huobi, all of the big crypto exchanges that the OG crypto users here in Hong Kong are using. So this is what is known as the one year transitional arrangements. Mm -hmm. And within this time, all of these exchanges are actually doing their paperwork to apply for their VASP licenses, all right? So it's not as simple as you think it is writing a sick leave request for your boss to be approved. It's not a one or two day kind of thing. It takes years even. So a lot of crypto exchanges around the world have actually been preparing for the paperwork since last year. Uh, the procedure is a lot more complicated than we think. Um, it takes a lot of steps. They have been engaging with um, a lot of external consultants, auditing firms, uh, cybersecurity firms, banks, etc. So take OKX as an example. Uh, according to the managing director of OKX, Lennox Lai, mm. he said in an interview with Bloomberg that they're hoping to submit the paperwork by the end of this year. Let's take a look at their interview. Joining us today is Lennox Lai. He's the managing director at OKX, which is one of the crypto exchanges applying for a license here. So we're just discussing, Lennox, that you started this application process about a year ago now. Is that right? Yeah, we prepared for this application in terms of personal team management for a year ago. Mm -hmm. But the yeah. rules start effective today, so everyone applying Correct. from today will need to be meeting these new regulations. So when exactly are you planning to submit the paperwork finally? So right now it's just paperwork uh -huh. and also engaging with other external consultants. So hopefully by the end of the year, everything's finished. We can submit the applications. So as you can see, it actually takes a lot of time and preparation for these exchanges to get set up here in Hong Kong. And because of that, that incurs a lot of costs. A lot of the obligation compliance that they have to follow usually deter a lot of these crypto businesses from ever being a part of that country's business. Mm -hmm. And for Hong Kong, that would mainly be no stable coins trading allowed for the moment and no derivatives trading as well. In case you didn't know, crypto exchanges make a lot of money from derivatives trading fees. So for the time being, only spot trading large market coins are allowed in Hong Kong mm -hmm. and crypto exchanges don't earn fees from spot trading. They earn them from derivatives trading. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, there's also a huge demand from institutional investors like hedge funds for well-regulated derivatives market. Now, historically, Hong Kong has long been a financial hub in mm -hmm. Asia. But relatively speaking, it is a small market because Hong Kong has like seven to eight million people and crypto is still very new. But there is a secret weapon that Hong Kong has that other countries don't, is that they have access and the gateway to China. Mm -hmm. So if it works in Hong Kong, it will work in China. So if China opens up their crypto policies, their regulations are saying okay to crypto, that's when license exchanges here in Hong Kong can apply for licenses in China as well. And another win for them is that they can capture most of the liquidity mm -hmm. coming in from China. So essentially what we're seeing is that these crypto exchanges are fortifying their position for a better ROI in the future. So not only are crypto exchanges looking to cooperate with Hong Kong, 
Foreign countries such as the UAE is also looking to cooperate with Hong Kong and the Asia market. Just two days ago, the central banks of the UAE and Hong Kong Monetary Authority actually held a meeting to enhance collaboration between the financial service sectors between the two jurisdictions. Now, in case you didn't know, the UAE were one of the first to create VASP licenses. So we can see a lot of similarities between Hong Kong and the UAE in terms of their framework. Now, this is a very big deal because if more and more countries are working together to establish regulatory clarity for crypto assets, that will definitely help crypto businesses in the long run. It won't hinder them in terms of development, in terms of legal ramifications. That's right. So during the meeting between the UAE and Hong Kong, they actually agreed to focus on three major areas. Firstly, the financial infrastructure. Secondly, financial market connectivity, and most importantly, virtual asset regulations and development. It's very important that UAE and Hong Kong is having this discussion because accessibility and connectivity has always been a huge pay point for us crypto investors. And it's great that UAE and Hong Kong is addressing this issue by building an infrastructure that is going to make our lives easier. So think about it like this. They're basically building a super interconnected highway with no traffic and you can go anywhere you want. And this basically makes our lives at, as crypto investors easier when you can move your money around. So as we can see, UAE is really trying to put a foot into the Asia market because from our previous video, uh, we talked about how the UAE recently submitted an application to officially join in the BRICS. And UAE also promised to um, fund the new development bank, which is a global bank developed on the BRICS, and they're also developing a common currency used for international trades. And now they're cooperating closely with Hong Kong, possibly because they see how much liquidity there is in the Asian market. So the UAE recognized that this is a great opportunity to be a part of it. In this meeting between UAE and Hong Kong, there are also other banks operating in Hong Kong that participated. And these banks include Bank of China, Citibank, Standard Chartered, as well as HSBC. So if you're a crypto investor based in Hong Kong, you should definitely keep an eye out on these banks because these banks might possibly be the major banks that you can on and off ramp your crypto in Hong Kong. So that concludes our news for today. Thank you for watching. If you found this episode helpful, don't forget to like, share, and comment down below to let us know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you never miss out on anything crypto related. And until next time, bye!